Hey everyone. So this last section of the patient history is called the review of systems. Uh, if you haven't checked out my other videos already, we talked about the history of present illness, the past medical history, the family history, social history, and we're rounding off today with review of systems. Okay. I've heard patients or people say before review of symptoms. Well, I mean, it kind of makes sense. It is a review of symptoms, but the correct way to say it is review of systems. So I thought today um, what I do is go through these review systems with you. We're not going to spend time and go through every single one, but just giving you some tips and tricks to make sure we remember everything. Okay. So let's look at my cheat sheet over here. This is actually your patient encounter one practical rubric. Okay, you have access to this on your Blackboard. And if you look, you can see exactly what is expected of you for your first um, practical examination. So I'm going to fast forward down here to the second page, which is the review systems. And as you notice, it's quite a bit of points, 19 points. Okay, um, the other areas, I mean, 26 points for the HPI, 23 points for the past medical history. So it is the third most valuable section. So make sure that you put... Um, some emphasis into that, okay? So what is the review of systems? The review of systems is um, a section where we can kind of cast our net pretty wide and see what we grab, okay? So it's kind of an area to probe patients about other types of symptoms they might be experiencing to try to make sure we don't miss anything, okay? Now, um, I've worked in emergency medicine a lot and Really, I never ever ask a separate review of systems. Um, I always ask my pertinent review of systems in my HPI. What does that mean? Well, let's say I am talking about mm, shortness of breath. Okay, I'm talking about shortness of breath, and in my HPI, I don't want to wait till the end after I've talked about. You know, what they do for a living and stuff to ask them what other symptoms they're having. So I will ask targeted review systems in my HPI. For shortness of breath, I would probably ask if they had a cough, if they have a fever, if they have a uh, chest pain, any diaphoresis or sweating, um, if they have any paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, you know, any orthopnea. I would probably ask if they have any lower extremity edema, right? So I'm thinking about my differential diagnosis and I'm asking symptoms related to those to try to rule things in or out. So that takes place in the HPI. This part at the end of your history, this review of systems section is intended for all the rest of the review of systems that, we've, that we didn't ask earlier, okay? In most systems, the review of systems is asked to your patient before you even get in the room. So they either hand them a worksheet that they have to answer where they have to check yes or no for all of these different symptoms, or they'll be sent like a text message or an email before they come to their visit to fill out their history ahead of time. So if you do have the review systems for your patient ahead of time, it'll save you a lot of time because you can just look for any yeses and then address those instead of asking each one over and over again. This can be kind of time consuming. Now, for our practical examination, we do have to ask review of systems. And remember, there are 19 points, okay? Uh, you're going to get one point per system. And within each system, you are going to have to ask at least two, um, two symptoms, okay? Um, in the past, for general, we've asked that you ask all of the general, okay? So I'm going to ask every single patient whether they have any fever, chills, night sweats, appetite uh, change, weight change, weakness, fatigue, malaise. That we had to ask all of them before. Um, for this one, for review of systems, you cannot um, do a relay of questions. So I just how I asked it right now, do you have any fever, chills, night sweats, appetite? You can't do that, okay? It needs to be one at a time and you get a quick pause to have the patient answer yes or no. Okay, so for instance, for the general, I would say, uh, I would have to tell them ahead of time, uh, This, uh, thank you for answering the questions uh, about your uh, social history. Now we're going to move on to a section called the review of systems. In the review of systems, we ask you a lot of yes or no questions about other symptoms you might be having so that we can get a better overall picture of your health. Um, so 
Have you had any fever? No. Any chills? No. Any night sweats? No. Any appetite change? No. Any weight loss or weight change? No. Any weakness? No. Any fatigue? No. You get the point. Okay. Um, and then you do that for the rest of the review systems. So for H-E-N-T, you need to ask at least two per H-E-E-N-T. So you need to ask two for the head, two for the eyes, two for the ears, two for the nose, two for the throat. Okay. And so moving through all of them, my advice to you is to, on your little um, sheet, your little scratch paper that you can write on ahead of the practical exam, is to come up with some sort of system to like write yourself reminders. You cannot write out all, you know, all of the review systems. You cannot write every symptom down. You're going to have to do some memorization, uh, but you can give yourself some clues, right? You might come up with, write, might write G H E E N T R C V C G, and you might do it that way. Or um, one way that I've tackled it before is I try to start from the head and work my way down. So start with the general, then I tackle the H-E-E-N-T because it's up here. Then I might do the neck, right? And neck and endocrine, okay? Then I might do the chest, respiratory, cardio, maybe vascular. Uh, moving down, I might do the GI, right? GI, renal, um, and and so forth. You might try it that way. I don't know. It's not, there's not one quick, easy way. But I do have a tip or trick for you, okay? Now, if you'll notice here, if you'll notice, say for head, I have hair loss here, okay? But if I come down to endocrine, I see there's a hair loss also. So a hack that you might be able to do is start figuring out which ones have duplicates, okay? So there is, mm, there's some other duplicates in here. I might not lay them out all for you, but... Uh, there are several duplicates within here. And if you can find a duplicate, it can count for both. I have checked with your patient account instructor and she is in agreement with that. So there's a hack. It can save you some brain space, right? Some hard drive in your brain and it can make it a little bit easier for you. Now don't waste an extraordinary amount of time figuring out which ones are all duplicates and trying to organize it that way. Just, it makes sense, right? Uh, I can imagine if you've ever been to the clinic, and ever seen a provider, they've asked you these questions. So if I was thinking of the head, I would think um, hair loss, sin sinus, uh, facial pain, scalp pain, for the eyes, any vision changes, blurry vision, um, tearing, um, red eye, right? So you just have to think a little bit, right? Um, if I thought of the GI, super easy, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, there you go, you got your three. So it's not as difficult as you might think it might be or as daunting or overwhelming. Um, just if you use a little bit of common sense, it might not be so bad. Um, so that's my tips or tricks for review systems. Um, you just got to sit down and memorize them. But those are some little uh, ways that can save you a little bit of time. So next video, I'm going to kind of put it all together. We're going to look at this rubric specifically looking at the point values, looking at the timing for this, so we can make sure that we get everything exactly right for our practical examination. So that being said, um, I hope you found this video a little bit interesting, um, helpful. Um, if you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.